The Philippines is a marvelous island nation with several thousand islands, multiple languages, and possibly some of the kindest people you'll ever meet. But they have a problem. The problem shows itself in many facets, and for years I've been trying to find out the roots and figure out solutions that I would then pitch to those whom I think might be able to fix it, even though I'm a nobody with a nobody's name. The roots of the Philippine problem lie open to me now, but they still need fixing. I'm talking about our need for economic reforms and educational reforms. First and foremost, when one brings this up, a lot of tweens immediately state you want the country to be like the West, lose its identity, which is not what I'm doing. Don't worry, I have a very deep respect and adoration for the Philippine cultures and identities. If anything, I want them to be preserved, flourish, and be cultivated for future generations. And if there's two groups I find deserve most of our attention, it's the Pulube sa mga squatter at probinsya at ang mga tribo. Nevertheless, there is an important issue we need to talk about. In the 1970s, both the Marcos dictatorship in the Philippines as well as the Park dictatorship in South Korea started an overseas workers program. Koreans and Filipinos were sent abroad to work there and their money was sent back to their respective home countries. In South Korea, this money was then used for things like the construction of infrastructure and the founding of companies. By the end of the 20th century, South Korea, which up until 1990 was still poorer than North Korea, emerged into a first world industrialized nation. Meanwhile. The Philippines got stuck. By 2010, around 10 million Filipino citizens were working abroad, roughly the same amount that lived in Metro Manila at the time. And this doesn't even include those that changed their citizenship and their spouses and offspring. The Overseas Filipino Worker, or OFW, had become invaluable to the nation's GDP. But unlike South Korea, the Philippines prided itself with producing labor for abroad instead of inside the nation and kept the status quo up until the 21st century. After all these decades, a justified question might be to ask what happened to all the money OFWs earned through their hard work. Of course, the Philippines did export products. Skyflakes and San Miguel beer are very popular as an example, and Filipino companies like Oishi Shang Haojia enjoy popularity abroad. I'm not saying that Filipinos should be like South Koreans, but we see that the money South Korean overseas workers sent home was used by the government for the betterment of the people. That is why one of the programs I wholeheartedly support about the Rodrigo Duterte administration is that it invests into railroads, which can more easily and swiftly transport mass goods and great amounts of people for a lower price than cars or trucks, despite me disagreeing with other ideas of the government. And it isn't just South Korea. This is Pudong, Shanghai, in 1990, and this is it in 2013. You see a massive difference there. China, which suffered greatly at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century, now is this industrial Goliath. Literacy in China is at a never-before-seen height. When you talk to Chinese in their 20s and then talk to their grandparents, you'll find that while the young ones often have university degrees, many of the elders don't even know how to read. So when I confront Philippine politicians regarding the needs for economical and educational reforms, a lot of them always tell me that it won't work because the Philippines is not a rich country like the others. But those two examples I just gave you were poorer than the Philippines and now they're richer. So let me, if I may, get down to the meat of things because everything starts with education. One of the ideas I've been trying to pitch for years is the benefits of exchange programs. In the first cabinet meeting of President Duterte, he invited the members to visit Cuba as he appreciates their healthcare system and finds that it would work for the people. I have for years asked politicians if we could have more exchange programs for the police, for our politicians, and especially for our students as they would help us. Exchange is a good thing. The US military as an example constantly has exchanges with other allied armies to improve their own forces. When the Meiji era replaced the Tokugawa period, Japan invited lots of foreign officials to learn from them. We can see how exchange is something that works, but all Filipino politicians I've talked to told me that it won't work and that there's no need, and that these nations are rich so we can afford it and then these officials started ignoring me. But to those politicians, I would like to again point at why it works. China for years has been doing a Liu Xiaoxiang program. Across the globe, you see tons of Chinese students taking university courses in all kinds of subjects. Many of them stay abroad, but many others also come home and they bring with them, amongst other things, the scientific knowledge from abroad. And by 2016, China had moved from merely imitating products from other countries to creating their own products. This is all to China's educational policy of sending their kids abroad to study there. If we would pursue a similar measure, our children would get all the knowledge they require to help every Filipino in our country, help their families, 
and help themselves. I had, for a couple of years, attempted to pitch this idea to academics and politicians to no avail. But I would like to say, if bringing our children abroad is not a valid option, then maybe bringing the abroad to us might be. This is the German-Vietnamese university that was built as a joint venture between Vietnam and the German DAAD, Deutscher Akademischer Auslandsdienst, or German Academic Foreign Service. The DAAD had built joint universities like that in other developing nations as well, like in Turkey, for example. Quite a while ago, I talked to representatives of the DAAD at Bielefeld University who told me that this is a great idea, but that creating something like this is not a humanitarian project. There would need to be a benefit for Germany in it, but they are generally open for negotiations and cooperation. They concluded by telling me to try and find partners in the Philippines for talks. We could share their scientific knowledge. Germany is one of the world's leading economies and has produced countless Nobel laureates and a massive number of famous composers, scientists and researchers. I attempted again to reach out to Philippine universities and politicians and again was either told that they had no interest or was right out ignored. Given the circumstances and the current feeling of change amongst people, I find that if those officials won't listen, maybe the people will, and maybe together we can fix the Philippine problem. We don't have to be like other countries. We are the Philippines with a unique Filipino identity. We can look at ideas from abroad, see if they fit, and make a colorful bouquet of innovation. I've never done this to any of my other videos and I will probably never do this again, but please share my ideas with your friends or share the video. I want there to be a discussion on innovation. I want there to be innovation. Thanks for listening.